Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be showing you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. First up was Christmas Day. We had dinner over at my mom and dad's house. My dad has been wanting to make a goose for the past few years, and he finally decided to give it a try this year. And my mom asked me though to bring a small ham, just in case not everyone liked the goose, we would have something that we liked. So let me show you how I like to make my hams. I got this small pre-sliced pre-cooked ham at Walmart and all I'm going to do is basically follow the package instructions. I do though like to make my own glaze. So I'm going to add the ham to this foil pan just to make it easy for cleanup and that way I don't have to worry about bringing a pan home for my mom and dad's house. In this bowl, I'm going to add in some brown sugar. Now, I don't measure when I do this, but I used probably about a half a cup of ham. And then I like to add in a couple tablespoons of Dijon mustard. I've also used spicy brown mustard and uh, just regular yellow mustard, just whatever I have on hand. And then I like to add in maybe a tablespoon of honey. You can also do maple syrup. And then I like to add in a couple tablespoons of warm water. That just kind of dissolves the sugar just a little bit and kind of makes it a looser consistency. I've also done this using pineapple juice instead of the warm water and that's really good too. But I'm going to stir that until it's combined really well, pour that over my ham, cover it with foil, and then like I said, I'm just going to bake it according to the package instructions and that's it, it'll be ready. Here's the goose that my dad made. Now my dad's had goose before, but the rest of us hadn't, and I was a little bit worried whether I would like it or not, but it was delicious. It was so good. Here's a picture of my plate. We'll start with the ham that I brought. Then next to that are a few slices of the goose my dad made. Then we have some dressing, and then my dad made giblet gravy. I've shared how we make the giblet gravy and dressing before my channel. I'll have that linked in the description box below. Then my mom made some Velveeta shells and cheese. We have some Hawaiian rolls. My mom made some mashed potatoes. She used some of the steaming mashed potatoes and then just cooked them, mashed them up with some milk, butter, uh, salt, and pepper. And then we have some green beans. My mom likes to add um, chicken bouillon and some garlic powder, salt, and pepper to her green beans. And then she made some corn that she just seasoned with some butter, salt, and pepper. That was dinner. It was delicious. So, so yummy. And then for dessert, she made a chocolate pie. So she just uses a, a frozen pie crust that she bakes and then allows to cool. She takes a package of chocolate pudding mix, the instant kind, and follows the instructions for the pie and then whips that up and then puts that in the pie crust and just allows it to chill. And then she just bought a store-bought uh, pecan pie. And if you celebrate Christmas, I hope that you and your family had a wonderful, wonderful holiday. For dinner the next night, I made Philly cheesesteak sliders. I'd seen this recipe and pinned it, and I bought some Philly cheesesteak meat from Walmart a couple weeks ago with the intent of making these sliders, but I didn't end up following the recipe exactly. I also have it linked in the description box below. And the reason that I didn't follow it exactly is because I realized that we had about three quarters of steak left over from our Christmas Eve dinner. I have that in last week's What's for Dinner video. I'll link it in the description box below. But I just made some strip steaks with some sauteed onions and mushrooms. And I already had that in the fridge and I needed to use it up. So I thought, let me just use that instead of, you know, cooking steak and and then I still have this leftover steak and onions and mushrooms and nothing to do with it so I'll show you what I did again I didn't follow the recipe exactly but I'll still have it linked below these were delicious they were so yummy I've got my oven preheating to 350 degrees. I've sprayed my casserole dish with some nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to add in my Hawaiian rolls that I have sliced in half horizontally. If you don't care for Hawaiian rolls, you can just use slider buns or dinner rolls, whatever you prefer. So once I've got those added to my casserole dish, I'm going to add some provolone cheese. You could also use white American cheese or pepper jack would also be good in this. 
Now, in this skillet here, I have my steak and onions. So what I did was I took the leftover strip steak, I cut it into small pieces, I put it into the skillet with my onions and mushrooms and I added about a tablespoon of butter and I cooked it on about medium low for just a couple minutes until that steak heated up. So I'm going to add that to my rolls, cover it with the tops of the rolls, and then I'm going to set that aside and make like the butter that I'm going to pour over it. Now for the butter sauce, I didn't measure anything. I just eyeballed it. In this bowl, I have about three or four tablespoons of butter that I cooked in the microwave for about 20 or 30 seconds just until it was melted. I'm going to add in a couple dashes of Worcestershire sauce, a little bit of Dijon mustard, maybe a half a tablespoon or so, and then some onion powder. I'm going to stir that until it's well combined. I'm going to brush the butter over the rolls, cover this with foil, and I put this into my preheated oven. I baked it for 10 minutes, removed the foil, and baked it for another 10 minutes. Here are the sliders out of the oven. I allowed them to cool for about five to seven minutes before I cut them up to serve them. Here are the finished plates. So we have a couple of the sliders, and then I just made some side salads, and this was so yummy. Those sliders were delicious. Dinner the next night was completely off the meal plan, but maybe a month or two ago, I made some meatballs in the crock pot. And normally when I make meatballs in the crock pot, I do like barbecue sauce and grape jelly. But I'd seen on Taylor Elmore's channel, which I'll have her channel linked in the description box below, but I've seen where she has added red pepper jelly to her meatballs and I tried it a couple months ago and it was delicious and I've been craving it. So I decided that this night was the night that I was going to go ahead and make them. But I kind of decided last minute so I didn't have time to put this in the crock pot. So I just cooked it on top of the stove. So what I did was I took a bag of meatballs. I got these from the Dollar General. They're actually pretty tasty and they're super cheap. So I added them to my pot. I added some barbecue sauce, some red pepper jelly, and then I covered it with a lid just so it didn't splatter all over the kitchen. And I cooked these on about medium for 20 minutes or so. I don't remember exactly what the package said, but just cook them according to your package instructions and make sure they're cooked all the way through. To go along with the meatballs, I decided we'd just do a snacky dinner. We had some frozen beef taquitos in the freezer and I wanted to start using those up. So I just placed them on a cookie sheet and baked them in the oven according to the package instructions. And Rotel dip sounded really, really good to me and it sounded good to my husband as well. I didn't have time to cook this in the crock pot either. So I just did it on top of the stove. I took some Velveeta, cubed it up, added it to the saucepan with a can of Rotel that I did not drain. I cooked it on about medium low heat, stirring it pretty often until it was melted. Now, personally, I prefer to cook up some breakfast sausage or ground beef and season it and add it to my Rotel dip, but my husband prefers it without it. Sometimes I add the meat and he'll eat it or not eat it if I'm really craving it, but tonight I wanted him to enjoy it, so I left out the meat. So to go along with this, we have some tortilla chips. We have a little bit of these green and red ones left over from Christmas, so we're going to use those up. And then I have this Chipotle ranch from Walmart that we're going to dip the taquitos in. Here's a picture of our plates. We have some of the Rotel and chips, the taquitos with some of that ranch and the meatballs. This was so good. I love, love, love snacky dinners like this. It's one of my favorite dinners to have. For dinner the next night, I made a pesto chicken casserole. I've shared this before on my channel, but I wanted to share it with you again because we loved it the last time I made it, and it's super quick and easy to make. I got this recipe from Adrienne over at What My Kids Won't Eat. I'll have her channel linked in the description box below. To go along with this, I was going to make mashed potatoes, but just to be honest, I did not feel like washing the potatoes, peeling them, boiling them, draining them, all that jazz. So I decided to just cook up some au gratin potatoes. I have this box in my pantry that I wanted to use up. So I'm just going to cook these according to the package instructions. For my other side, I'm making some roasted asparagus. I just do this pretty simply. I take the asparagus, wash it, I cut off kind of the tougher ends, and then I'm going to add either some olive oil or I have a little bit of this avocado oil left and I wanna use it up. So I'm going to drizzle that. Now for the seasonings, I'm going to add some garlic powder 
And I left this in here because as you can see, YouTubers, we make mistakes too. I thought that this was one of the lids that you uh, screw off and it has a lid under that. It wasn't. So as you can see, I dumped out like half the jar of garlic powder onto my cookie sheet, but no worries. It's fixable. I just took a brand new cookie sheet, added the asparagus, added um, a little bit more oil because I hadn't tossed it together yet. So most of the oil was still on the other cookie sheet. I'm going to add a little bit more garlic powder and this time I'm going to make sure that the lid is correct. <laughs> I'm going to add some salt and pepper, toss that around, and then I'll bake this in the oven now when i make asparagus or like roasted green beans or broccoli a lot of times i'll just cook it at the same temperature of whatever the main uh, entree or the main protein that i'm cooking i just cook it until it's nice and tender so in this case i cooked it alongside of the uh, au gratin potatoes which i believe were at like 425 degrees all right, so for the chicken, I am going to remove it from the package. I'm just using some chicken breasts. I'm going to season it with some salt, pepper, cavenders, and garlic powder. You could use whatever seasonings you prefer. Next, I'm going to sear the chicken. Now, I'm not worried about cooking it through at this stage. I'm just giving it a good sear. In this skillet, I've got it over about medium high heat. I've added in some olive oil and about a half a tablespoon of butter. Once that is good and hot, I'm going to add in my chicken and then season the other side with the same seasonings that I did before, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and cavenders. I cooked this for just about two or three minutes on the first side once it was golden brown. I gave it a flip, cooked it another couple minutes on the other side until it was golden brown. Then I'm going to place it into a grease casserole dish, which I've got here. I'm going to add a layer of pesto. Now, I've only tried it with regular pesto, but I think this would be really good with the sun-dried tomato pesto. That would be delicious. Now, I'm being very careful not to touch the uh, spoon to the chicken because it is not cooked all the way through. But I've spread the pesto over the chicken. Then I'm going to add some sliced Roma tomatoes. Now I like to sprinkle just a tiny little bit of salt on the tomatoes. And then I have a little bit of this fresh mozzarella cheese. I'm just going to kind of hand shred that and put that on top. You could also just use shredded mozzarella cheese. That would be fine as well. We're going to place this into the oven and cook it until the chicken has reached at least 165 degrees internal temperature. Here's the finished pesto chicken casserole, the au gratin potatoes. I sprinkled a little bit of parsley flakes on top just for a little bit of color. And then we have the finished asparagus. And here's our plates. This was so good. I really recommend that you all give this pesto chicken casserole a try. It's super yummy. For dinner this next night, I made fried cod. I've been wanting to make fried cod for a while now and just haven't done it. I've put it off. I've mentioned this before on my channel, but just in case you're new, I do not like to deep fry. I don't do it a lot. You don't see it on my channel a lot. There are several reasons for that. First, I hate that the oil gets everywhere. I hate the smell of it. And then just to be completely honest, it's not something that I'm good at. It's not a strong suit of mine. I have a very hard time with the temperature of the oil, keeping it consistent. Things either burn or they soak up so much grease or like I've tried to cook fried chicken and it's beautiful on the outside and completely raw on the inside. So I've just been procrastinating, but I got a um, deep fryer on Amazon. And so I figured with that, surely I could keep the oil a little bit more consistent and hopefully it wouldn't make such a huge mess. So decided to do it tonight. I am just going to use some store-bought fries. These are from Aldi, and I use some store-bought hush puppies. These I got at uh, Food Lion, I believe. While the fries are in the deep fryer, I'm going to get started on the batter for the fish. I'll have the recipe that I use linked in the description box below. So to this bowl, I'm going to add in my all-purpose flour, cornstarch, baking soda, baking powder, and then seasonings. For those seasonings, we're going to use garlic powder, onion powder, salt, and some Old Bay seasoning. I'm going to stir that until it's combined really well. The recipe calls for warm water and you can add that, but I like to add sparkling water, specifically lemon or lime flavored, depending on what I have on hand. You could also use beer. I like adding the sparkling water because the carbonation makes the batter lighter and then I like 
um, using the lemon or lime because it gives it a little pop of citrus flavor. You can also use beer, of course. We're not alcohol drinkers though, so I don't typically have that on hand, but my husband loves sparkling water, so we, we pretty much always have that. So I'm just going to add the sparkling water a little bit at a time, whisking that until the batter is a thick pancake consistency. For the fish, I bought some frozen cod fillets at Walmart. I thawed them in my refrigerator. I removed them from the packaging and patted them dry with some paper towels really well. I cut them into smaller pieces and seasoned both sides of the fillet pieces with a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm going to dip the fillet pieces in the batter and make sure that I get it on both sides. And then I'm going to place those into the hot oil. Fish doesn't take very long at all to cook. They just took a couple minutes per side. As the fish gets done, I like to put it onto a cookie sheet that has been lined with some paper towels and wire racks. And as the fish fillets come out of the hot oil, I sprinkle just a tiny little bit of salt on top. Then we have the fries. When they came out of the deep fryer, I sprinkled a little bit of French fry seasoning that we got from the Dollar Tree on there. And then we have some of the hush puppies. To go along with it, I whipped up a quick tartar sauce. For my tartar sauce, I think I've shared this before on my channel, but all I do is just take some mayonnaise, add relish, a little bit of lemon juice, and some salt and pepper, and stir that until it's well combined. We like uh, ketchup with our hush puppies and fries, of course, and then my husband loves malt vinegar on his um, fish. So that was dinner this night. Here are the plates. This was super, super delicious. For dinner the next night, I made pulled pork. I bought this boneless pork shoulder on Markdown at Kroger. It's seasoned and marinated and it's cooked in a bag. As you can see, this was $3.99. We hadn't tried this before, but for a pound and a half of meat, I figured at that price, it could not hurt to give it a try. So I just cooked this according to the package instructions. For the side dish, I'm making cheesy ranch potatoes. These are delicious. They are so, so good. I'll have the recipe linked in the description box below. I don't follow it exactly. I've made this several times, so I just kind of eyeball it. But again, I'll have the recipe in the description box below. I have a bag of these baby red potatoes. I cooked these in the microwave according to the package instructions. I'm going to spray my casserole dish with some nonstick cooking spray. And I do want to make just a quick note here. As you can see, I do have a lit candle to the left of me. So I'm being very, very careful with this cooking spray and making sure I don't get it anywhere near that lit candle. So once I've sprayed my casserole dish, I'm going to add my potatoes. I cut them in half. Then I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper and give that a stir. Next, I'm adding the ranch dressing. You can use your favorite bottled. I'm using homemade or semi-homemade rather. I've shared how I make this before on my channel. I'll have it linked in the description box below. Nothing fancy. I really just followed the instructions on the back of the Hidden Valley Ranch packets. So I'm going to toss the potatoes and the ranch dressing together. Then I'm taking some shredded cheddar cheese and I'm going to sprinkle that all over the potatoes. Next, I'm going to add some bacon pieces. You can cook up some fresh bacon, of course. I'm using the pieces just because it's quick and easy. And then that's it. This is going to go into the preheated oven. It was set at, I think, 350 degrees for the pork to cook at. So I just kept it um, at that same temperature. And I baked it for about 10 to 12 minutes until the cheese was melted. Once the pork was done, I removed it from the bag and placed it into this bowl. I'm going to take two forks and shred it. And you can add your favorite barbecue sauce to this. I had about a half a bottle of this Duke's Georgia Sweet Heat barbecue sauce in my refrigerator that I needed to use up. So I'm going to add some of that barbecue sauce and then stir it, and then that's it. The pork will be done. Now, once we made our sandwiches and we tasted it, we did feel like it was just a little bit salty for our particular liking. So um, I added a little bit of brown sugar, just maybe a tablespoon, and stirred it, and then the leftovers were a lot less salty. So for the sandwiches, I'm using these Martin's potato rolls. Here we have the pulled pork and then some of the Georgia sweet heat uh, left over in case we want a little extra barbecue sauce. And then we also have this Duke's uh, Alabama style white barbecue sauce. We hadn't tried this before. My husband really enjoyed it. I didn't particularly care for it, but um, we have that in case we wanted to add it to our sandwiches. And then we have the cheesy ranch potatoes. I did garnish those with a little bit of chopped green onions. Here are the plates. This was super yummy. Pulled pork, it was so easy to put together that cook in a bag. It was nice and juicy and tender, and those potatoes are good. I mean, you can't go wrong with ranch and cheese and bacon and potatoes. So that was our dinner this night. 
the last dinner in this week's video was New Year's Eve. Now, my husband and I normally don't really do a lot for New Year's Eve. It's normally just the two of us. We'll watch some movies, and then we ring in the new year with, you know, the, the ball drop and some sparkling grape juice or something. But this year, we had my mom and dad and my siblings over, and we did all kinds of appetizers. We watched movies and hung out together. It was so much fun. So I'll share with you some of the things that I made, and I'll show you our spread. So let's get started with the Little Smokies. To my crock pot, I'm going to add a package of Little Smokies. Next, I'm going to add some barbecue sauce. Use your favorite. I prefer Sweet Baby Ray's. I mean, I'll use whatever I have on hand, but I honestly do prefer Sweet Baby Ray's. I'm adding that and then adding some brown sugar. And then you could just stop there, but it's also really super delicious to add a little bit of Dr. Pepper. So good. I, you could also probably do this with root beer. I've never tried it, but Dr. Pepper is yummy. I'm going to give that a stir, cover this with a lid, and I cooked it on low for about four hours. And here are the Smokies when they're done. Next up, I'm making spinach dip. Now, I've made this for years and years. This is one of our family favorites. We all love this. It's so good. It's super easy. In this bowl, I'm adding in my mayonnaise. Then I'm going to add in the sour cream. And a quick note, I'll have this recipe as well as the recipe for the Little Smokies and the other things I'm making today linked in the description box below. Next, I'm adding some Hidden Valley Ranch dressing mix. I like to add this or the Nor vegetable dip mix, but that can be a little hard to find, so I just add whatever I can find. If I can't find the Nor, I don't stress, I just use the ranch. Now I'm adding some chopped green onions. Then I'm going to add my spinach. This is frozen. It's been thawed completely and then I've drained it really well. You really wanna take your time and get as much of the water out as you possibly can. Now I'm taking some water chestnuts. I drained them really well and chopped them up. I'm going to add that to the bowl and then stir everything together until it's really well combined. Now you can serve this dip just like this with some crackers or chips or vegetables. We like to use one of these King's Hawaiian round uh, bread bowls. I just take a paring knife, cut the inside of the bread uh, to make a little bread bowl, and then I take that bread and cut it up to serve along with it. And then normally we have some extra Hawaiian rolls that I'll cut into pieces. Here's the finished bread bowl. Like I said, this is so yummy. If you've never tried this before, I recommend you all give it a try. It's delicious. Next up, I tried a new recipe for a baked goat cheese dip. My husband and I just recently discovered the combination of goat cheese, fig jam, and prosciutto, and we have fallen in love. When I saw this recipe on Pinterest, I knew I had to give it a try, and I'm so glad that we did. It was delicious. So to this bowl, and I'm having the recipe, by the way. To this bowl, I added some softened plain goat cheese and some softened cream cheese, and using my hand mixer, I'm going to whip that for a couple minutes until the cheeses are combined and are nice and fluffy. Next, I'm going to add in the prosciutto. I got this prosciutto, capicola, and salami a little sub sandwich kit from Publix. We had Italian sandwiches for lunch last week, and I knew I wanted to make this dip, so I just set the prosciutto aside. I'm going to chop that up and stir that into the cheeses. I'm going to then take that cheese prosciutto mixture and place it into a grease casserole dish. Now I'm taking some fig jam. I had about a half of this fig jam jar uh, left over in my refrigerator and I wanted to use it up, so I'm adding that. And then that's it. This is going to go into a preheated oven set to 400 degrees and you'll bake this for about eight to 10 minutes. Once the dip comes out of the oven, you're going to want to chop up some pistachios and sprinkle those over top. Like I said, we love this. My dad in particular really enjoyed this. The only thing that I would change about this recipe, and it wasn't actually the recipe itself, it was what I used. I use salted pistachios, and I would suggest using unsalted pistachios. Prosciutto can be quite salty, and so the bites of the dip that you got with the prosciutto and the pistachios, it was super salty. So I'll definitely make this again, but next time I'm going to use unsalted pistachios. So if you all like fig jam, goat cheese, this kind of combination, I highly recommend this dip. It was delicious. Next up, I'm making sausage balls. Now, I know most of you probably know how to make sausage balls. You probably already have a recipe that you love, but I wanted to share with you how I like to make them because I have just a couple small little tweaks that I make to a basic recipe, not big changes, just a couple small little things, and everyone who has tried my sausage balls loves them, so let me show you how I make them. To this bowl, I'm adding in a pound of breakfast sausage. I'm just using mild. You can use hot, use your favorite brand. 
To that, I'm going to add in my Bisquick. Now, here's one of the small differences for my recipe. Most recipe calls for two cups of Bisquick. I only use a cup and a half. I personally feel like if you use the full two cups of Bisquick, they're a little on the dry side. So like I said, I like to cut that back and just use a cup and a half. Next, I'm adding in my shredded cheddar cheese. And then here is the other small tweak that I make to the recipe. I add in about three or four tablespoons of cold water. I make sure that it's cold because you've got the fat from the breakfast sausage and so I just prefer to use cold water. This just kind of helps it come together a little bit and adds just a little bit of moisture. And then I like to mix these with my hands. You can use a spoon or a spatula if you'd like, but I just feel like I can mix it together a lot better with my hands. So I mix it until it's really well combined. And then I uh, just shape them into little balls. I just roll them in my hands and I'm going to put them onto a grease cookie sheet. And then these are going to go into a preheated 350 degree oven and they'll bake for about 25 to 30 minutes. How long you bake them really just kind of depends on uh, how big you make your sausage balls. Here are the finished sausage balls. Like I said, they are so, so delicious. I encourage you to give these a try. Um, you know, if you have your own recipe, add a little bit of cold water, cut back a little bit on the Bisquick and see if you notice a difference. All right, so here's what we had for New Year's Eve. First, I made a quick shrimp cocktail. Just have some frozen cooked shrimp that I got at Walmart. I thawed them. I made a quick cocktail sauce. I've shared this before on my channel. I'll link it in the description box below. But I just take chili sauce, ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, hot sauce, lemon juice, and lots of fresh horseradish mix that together and then I had a bottle of cocktail sauce that I got at Aldi I just set that out I wasn't sure if we'd have enough cocktail sauce then to the right of that we have a little in a pasty platter that my mom got at Aldi my husband uh, we got this for my husband last year he loved it it's got an assortment of things a roasted red pepper uh, or no a sun-dried tomato hummus rather some marinated mushrooms olives all sorts of yummy things then my parents brought this cheese tray. They had some honey goat cheese, Colby Jack cheese, some white cheddar cheese, smoked Gouda, and something else. I can't remember the other thing. And then they brought some sliced summer sausage, some salami, and some beef sticks. And then we have an assortment of crackers. These are club crackers, some snowflake Ritz, and then a box of assorted entertainment crackers that I got at Aldi. Then we have the honey goat cheese dip, the sausage balls, and then I made a crescent roll veggie pizza. This veggie pizza is delicious. It's so good. I'm embarrassed about how much of this stuff I can eat. It's delicious. Then we have the little Smokies. Then I made some pigs in a blanket, just took some Smokies, wrapped some crescent rolls around them and baked them in the oven until the crescent rolls were golden brown. We have a little bit of barbecue sauce to dip the little uh, pigs in a blanket in. And then I made some bacon crackers. I've shared how I make these before on my channel. I'll have that linked in the description box below. This might sound a little bit weird if you've never had them, but if you haven't tried them, you've gotta make them. These things are addictive, they're delicious. I made some ham pinwheels. These are another family favorite. We love these. They are super delicious and incredibly easy. It's basically just two ingredients. You take some chive and onion cream cheese, spread it on some sliced ham, roll them up, and then cut them into pinwheels. I've shared them before on my channel. I'll have it linked in the description box below. And then for my two siblings, I've mentioned before, they're 13 and 15, so they love pizza. Um, so I made some bagel bites. I thought they would enjoy them, and they did. I think they're the only ones that ate them, and they, you know, tore through them. <laughs> but I'm glad. I'm glad that they liked them. And then I believe I saw Watts family recently um, do crackers, cream cheese, and cowboy candy. I think it was her. I have her channel linked in the description box below. And I had some cowboy candy that I'd bought in like at a farmer's market or something in my pantry. I wanted to use it up and I had an extra brick of cream cheese. So I just laid the cream cheese out until it got soft and added that cowboy candy. And that was good, but these jalapenos in particular were hot. They were super hot. Then we have the spinach dip, and then we just did some blue cheese stuffed olives, and then we have some kosher baby dill pickles and sweet gherkin pickles. And finally, I made just a couple quick sweet treats. So I had about a half a box of the Christmas Rice Krispies in my pantry. I wanted to use those up, so I made some Rice Krispie treats. And then to the right, I have a fruit tray that I made my um, fruit dip with. I've shared this before. I'll have it linked in the description box below. It's super easy and delicious. It was so much fun. We had these snacks. We just left them out. We grazed all night long. We watched a couple movies, rang in the new year. It was super fun. That's it for this week's video. I know that it was a little bit long than normal. I apologize about that, but hopefully there are some yummy recipes that you saw today that you want to give
give a try. I hope that you and your family have a happy new year, a healthy new year, and thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up button below and subscribe to my channel if you're not already, and I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.